Friday. Yeah. Uh, we're rolling, so go ahead. Okay. Well, um, welcome to the hive. Uh, this is the entrance to it through the nether, through the uh, nether rail. The stations, you arrive just here. None of this is very pretty, but you come through the nether, it's the portal and back out. And this is my portal room. A nice big um, nether portal room. There's a lot of work this. A lot of work. And there's the phone again. <laughs> she knows when you're regarding. <laughs> okay. Uh, I built this by building a big sphere of stone. Um, using one of the blueprints off the Minecraft forums to get a sphere. And I lined it inside with nether rack and built the glowstone and the, la the lava just to make it look like an entrance to the nether. The rest of the, pl the, for the, the, the hive is uh, purely functional rather than uh, designed. And it's got the name of the hive uh, because the mob um, system that's in here is a lot of tiny little spawning cells for the uh, <laughs> sleeping arrangements there. <laughs> uh, but the the hive itself, um, if you come back this way and look up, you'll see the great big rectangular block above us. That is filled with spawning chambers um, with pressure plates and water p pushers so that if anything spawns in there, water comes out and pushes it off. Uh, and it's a, it's a system of interconnected cells, uh, which I think it was Keebs um, who said it looked like uh, a beehive from the inside. Uh, this is the music room. I get that many music discs out of the mob trap that it's easy to have them all in their own um, is there one in? No? I don't think so, no. Um, it's easy to have them all in their own Just blocks. You want to put one on? Sure, we'll get one in there. So I've got a, a um, well it's cats the one I've got, which I think is Gog's favourite. I've got a chest with a load of cats <laughs> in. These are all the music discs you can get in the game all the, ra all the way around here. There's how many of them? Uh, I think it's um, 11, is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, is it? Yeah, maybe 10, yeah, because I think one's a broken one. Um, this is a a dance floor. The pattern will change and everything, but I haven't got it wired up to a switch yet. So when I log in, this, it's um, it's broken. I have to go down and reconnect it. But I will put a switch in so that I can switch it on and off. This little um, uh, rain might make this loud and uncomfortable for you, so I'll go indoors first. <laughs> this is my workroom. As you can tell, my coal stores, um, all the furnaces. Most of the furnaces now are being powered by um, blaze rods. Uh, this here, if I need it, is a cobblestone generator. But I don't really collect cobble from that. I get all my cobble from um, digging out the bottom 16 layers of the ground <laughs> so <laughs> I don't need that keep like my valuable stuff in here uh, you're going to get wet now I you want to wait for the rain to stop well, I'm already kind of damp so <laughs> okay um, my storeroom is round here 
She's supposed to walk round and come in. Just at the moment it's still only a work in progress. Um, I'm trying to scale down my storerooms. I tend to build huge ones with seven or eight chests for every item. I'm trying to make it now so I just have one or even half a chest for items because it's not it's all that's needed. And if you look to your right you can see the outside of the sphere from the nether portal room. I see you have a very large ball. <laughs> it's just kind of hanging yes. off to the side there. Yes, that is a very large ball, you're right. <laughs> I thought you were on mute. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see the scale of the hive itself when you look up and see how, how large that that is. That was quite some work building, that. If you climb up onto the roof here, you'll see the farms. Um, breed, the wheat farm pumpkin farms and at the back the melon farms. Uh, I believe in getting a full stack of everything if you can get it <laughs> and the wheat farm is designed to give you a full stack of bread not wheat, bread. Um, some extra. Yeah I've mentioned in my videos before that you believe in doing everything in, in industrial scale and I don't think people really get a grasp of it until they see something like that. No. <laughs> um, if you want to harvest the wheat, uh, the uh, pumpkins, you'll see how that works. They're uh, auto, ha well, they're um, piston harvest. So I've not built um, a bud switch controlled one yet, but I do have plans to at some point. Maybe if I ever move on to another base, I'll have all the things to build them with and the melon one is just the same as the pumpkin one if you press the button it all harvests but you get with at the moment with the pumpkin one you get um, just on, over a stack and a half of pumpkins as you may have noticed I like to use jack-o-lanterns for lighting so um, it's all useful um, I'll take you this way and show you the tree farm. Get through the door. <laughs> yep. <laughs> way to the tree farm. We've got all four types of trees. Um, two rows of each. So just like anything else when you harvest all that um, you get a nice supply of wood saplings anything you want in that sort of scale still trying to make the outside pretty yet so I've only just started working on it with the fountain and a bit of grassing there's a lot of sand up there and they're <laughs> used up to make the glass roof for this place um, Nalo was very good to help me build that. Took us a while, didn't it, G? That was <laughs> that was a, a lot of sand. There's only three places left to show you, so we'll show you this way first. This place here is the slime hub. Um, I've we've got. If you look out of the hole, you can see the column disappearing down into the ocean to where I found a slime chunk. She found it, you found a slime in a corridor. And they explored around until we'd located where the slimes were. Then we built a system to collect them, bring them up, bring them down that great big water chute above us. And at the moment it's set to drop them here. I can change it so it drops them in my works. Uh, shop if I wanted to, um, but it brings out a chest of slime balls. There's a few stacks in there if you look. Yeah, just a few in the top one. And uh, then the other place, <laughs> like your sign. 
I said, well, yeah, why not? <laughs> I mean, if I, if I spe when it, once we've spent time here, then it does begin to work quite quickly, the slime farm. This in here is just a, a seeds and flower farm. All you do is you uh, pull the lever down, which closes the piston doors behind us. And it um, shuts off the light in above, and you spam ball meal. I'll, I'll do it to show you. Um, spam ball meal on the dirt there. And then put the lights back on and the water. And it should wash it all out, and all the seeds should drop down there, like that. Put all the seeds and flowers I want then. Seeing as how I like flowers. That's uh, a stack and a half of yellow, a stack of red, and about three stacks of seeds. Then the last place to show you is the actual mob farm itself. I've still got my signs up showing different places, which is when I built them. This slime hub was built on the 30th of April. Oh, 30th of April, and it's now getting into the 1st of July for me, today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two months ago. Now you've got to be careful in here. This takes you through into where all the mobs drop from the hive. And they drop here, where the they've fall has left them all um, one-hit kills. Apart from the zombies, of course, because of their armour. We can just punch each one it will die. And it was built to collect gunpowder this place really. Um, but as you can see it's very good for all mob loot and even um, I can get arrow for arrows quite easily, uh, arrows, records, by just getting skeletons to shoot the creepers. Yeah I was surprised how many uh Records you How get. many records you get through here? There you go, there's another one. <laughs> yeah, it collects loads, but it, it was just built for gunpowder, really. Now, do but you they're, all, they're all one hit kills. Do you still have the vines at the top that they land in and slow down? Uh, yes, um, if you look up, you can see how the hive widens out. Well, that's the, the bottom of the spawning chambers. Um, everything. The thinner part is just the drop. Um, <clears throat> it's a bit um, difficult to regulate them so that they all land with only half a heart damage when they're falling from so many different heights. And the way I've done it is by putting a ring of vines around the whole hive. And yes, that's a good demonstration. <laughs> now you'll see why it's all obsidian. <laughs> It wasn't obsidian at first, it was cobble and things like that, but um, <clears throat> Dwendon and Keeb like to come here to collect things and I used yeah. to end up with mobs spilling so out. <laughs> it definitely wasn't bro-proof. No. <laughs> Not in the um, early days. No, but it is now. Oh, there is a record there already. Yep. Up here and take a look up inside. Yeah, I did have it glass at that end, but once again, like you say, it wasn't bro proof, so. <laughs> and all you do to get the records, really, is you just run around so the skeletons can see you and shoot through. They see another record there now. They'll hit the creepers, and with the creepers being one hit kills, um, records are, are very, very frequent things to collect here. <laughs> As are creeper explosions. Well, that's very rare, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing very well to demonstrate how, how well built and secure the place is. <laughs> well, that's it. That's the hive. It's um, still a big work in progress. I wish I could make build pretty, but instead I build functional and industrial. <laughs> I like that, yeah. It's got its, it's got its beauty of its own. Yes. Mm, yeah. So did the elephant man. <laughs> and you've got, you know, you you build pretty when you want to. I mean, you've got these windows on the end that 
you know, look out onto this <laughs> onto this cobble wall here. Uh, yes, that cobble thing there is um, <laughs> when we was building the slime um, aqueduct for carrying the baby slimes. Um, they're all reduced down whatever size the slime gets. They reduce down to the smallest ones, and this carries them around. When we was building it, Kiba was helping me, and uh, he decided to build it round this way and round. <laughs> That's the window. <laughs> so I've now got a very good view of them going past, so it's very good. I like it. I can see if it's working or not. <laughs> you can wave to the baby slimes as they go past when I've got it actually activated. <laughs> um, and that's it. You can go up on the outside of the sphere, because that's not finished yet either. Oh, well, not, fin uh, not walled in. From this side over here, you can actually see some of the farms and the work rooms. But all this was built, of course. This was built in the air. There was nothing here. It was all air blocks. And um, as you look up at the size of that hive, I'm trying to remember how big we built it. Um, it's four chambers wide. Um, so there's eight chambers per level. And was it 13 lots of chambers going up? So 8 times 13 spawning chambers. It was an awesome number. Yeah, something like that. Um, you'll and get... <laughs> you'll, you should have seen all that by the time this goes up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, we built that. And uh, it goes... Like the roof of it is like to the very build limit, isn't it? It's like um, it's about and... 20 blocks below the build limit, yeah. Okay. I didn't go quite up to the full amount. Deliberately, I, I found that I didn't get much spawns above. But, um, it works, as you can see. That place gets quite full quite quickly. Very quick. That's it. Especially as you keep lighting up the downstairs. Yes, well, the whole area underneath... Um, can't see because of the clouds at the moment, but you go down to the slime room, you can see how far the whole area underneath here, um, we've spent a lot of time lighting up the whole cave systems underneath um, for the whole 128 to, behind you G, behind you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Um, yes, for the whole, roughly the whole mob spawning, which is 128 blocks from the player. So if you look out there past the large um, cobble tower, you can see in the distance in the water a tiny little piece of cobble with a light on it. And that is the 128 block limit from this edge here. Um, and the whole land underneath in all four directions, 128 from the hive, has been illuminated. We're finding very little now that hasn't been. It's a huge abandoned mine shaft underneath. You can ride down to it if you want to finish your video. Sure. Um, it's just all the way down. Well, I think I'm not sure what height I'm at here at the moment. Uh, what what height we're up at? We're nearly up at the old build height. It's a long ride down the ladders all the way to the bottom. Got an awful lot of boats in the water. There should be a lot less than there used to be because I've been using them and uh, breaking them on lily pads. Can't <laughs> wait for that to be fixed. <laughs> If you get off at the first um, <clears throat> first abandoned mine shaft under the water here, where you are now, you can see how we've been through and lit, lit everywhere up. There's not many places mobs can spawn now, especially not with. Um, my penchant for placing down torches. No. 
<laughs> there were many, many nights and many, many stacks of coal that went into lighting this place up. Oh, yes. Definitely. Yeah. Got a bit of track there to pick up. Uh, you get on to us for leaving Redstone. Yeah, well, Redstone's more useful. <laughs> That's it. All right. Thank you for the tour. You're quite welcome. I've got to find my way back now. <laughs> this way. That's it. Yeah, I, do, I dug from the centre uh, ladders. I took the ladders as the centre point. And if you look at it, I've dug uh, shafts for all the 128 blocks in all four directions. And uh, filled it in. Lit it all up. And I bit, do, actually dug the perimeter one out as well. If you run all the way to the end of one of these, Gotta you'll find it's a, it's a square perimeter that goes all the way around. Got a little slime in there, have you? Yeah. yeah. Um, he'll probably be below us somewhere then. Oh, there he is. Going down the ladder. Come back here, slime. <laughs> That's where I get all my resources from, down at the bottom here. He trademarked floating pumpkins again. Well, it just helps keep it illuminated to stop spawns and I, I put the fences and everything to mark off what I think are chunks um, so that if I get a slime spawning in one of them it's trapped within the, the thing so I've got a good idea of where it comes from that's where I got all the cobble for them place from ok alright thank you sir <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Just know that all the pumpkins here are facing the same way. <laughs> Unlike Dwendon's. <laughs> well. I can't sleep because he's put all his pumpkins the wrong way around. <laughs> my, my pumpkins don't have faces, so it's totally lost on us. Oh, is it? Oh, uh, right. Well, it's like an army of faces all facing that way. 